This is Envision Self Healing Podcast, episode number 59. Hi, I'm Will Fuller. And I'm Richard Miller. And we are the co-creators of EnvisionSelfHealing.com and are dedicated in helping you improve your eyesight and quality of life by taking healing into your own hands. Now, if you haven't had a chance already, then head over to the Envision Self Healing website and you can find a free ebook that gives you 10 top tips on how you can start improving your eyesight in our modern day world. The topic of the week this week is what is the cause of macular degeneration? And in the second half of the podcast, we're answering a question from a client who has a history of skin cancer and she's wondering, I want to do the stunning eye exercise and how can I do it with this without with taking this risk into account. So Richard, how's the world of self-healing been treating you this week? Well, I've, I've actually had a very busy week mm-hmm. and uh, so... You're building the, a house. I'm, well, I'm finishing my yard actually. I'm putting <laughs> okay. sand, I'm actually putting like six to ten tons of sand in my backyard, but that's a long oh. story. There's easier ways to hide a body, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I need a lot of sand therapy, so I'm just making a giant sandbox in my backyard. <laughs> anyway, um, so, and the, but the one task I was dealing with in terms of self-healing this week is trying to deal with the water supply, my water supply. Mm-hmm. And uh, It's I not a metaphor. We're not talking about drinking enough water or... No, 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 we actually, well, the, the fact that we're all told to drink enough water, right? Right. And then you start looking at what's in your water. This uh-huh. is why I bring this up. Okay. And I've had years of trying to deal with this with filters and blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. bought many, many filtration systems in my, in my history. I can hear a podcast topic coming up. Uh, it is a podcast. It's a very <laughs> long top topic. And, um, and even in San Francisco where we have very, very good water coming from the Sierra Nevada, mm-hmm. they add um, fluor- fluoride for our teeth. Mm-hmm. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> and they add uh, stuff called chloramine, which is a substitute for chlorine, okay. which is what most uh, municipalities uh, put in their water for, mm. for killing bacteria and, and such. Mm-hmm. So the trouble is fluoride, we, I think, has a detrimental effect uh, on the system. Mm-hmm. And the chloramine, actually, it's dissolved. I have a, a stream, a rubber, a rubber liner and a little stream I built out and back, mm-hmm. and it actually dissolves the rubber. Wow. So if it's dissolving rubber in my stream, what's it doing in, the, <laughs> in my bloodstream or whatever, you know? <laughs> so I'm now, after all my filtration and stuff, I think I've decided to go with distilled water mm-hmm. and, and there are now uh, countertop distillers out there okay. so it's a it's an interesting so solution so you don't have to think about mm-hmm. this kind of filter and will it get this chemical versus that chemical or mm-hmm. that bacteria versus it's just sort of like creates steam and then condenses okay. so i just thought it was this is the finally where i've ended up after all these years yeah of buying a distiller so mm-hmm. i just thought i'd put that out there as, a, nice. as yeah, an well, option we will uh, take a look at that. Yeah. Are you, have you ordered it? or It's or coming about? today. It's, okay. Momentarily, it's going to oh, arrive okay. via UPS, yes. All right. Well, we'll uh, find out next week then. In fact, you yeah, your if you guys hear a doorbell ring, that's my distiller. <laughs> well, Richard, we're in a, in a, in a, a movie studio. Oh, somewhere right, right. In yeah. San Francisco. Right. So, um, so how was your week? Uh, yeah, it was good. It was good. I, th- I, I guess that the main thing that stuck out for me this week was uh, the weekend I headed to Golden Gate Park. Um, a great place for us and also where we've done a lot of our videos. Anyone that's right. spent time on our website and seen the eye exercise videos uh, will know that we've shot most of those in Golden Gate Park. And I had a really interesting uh, experience, not with any of the homeless people or, or, or anything like that, but um, I was walking uh, through the park and there was beautiful blue skies and mm-hmm. trees and, mm-hmm. and green all around me. And I don't know what it was, but I kind of tuned in to... Um, the fact that I was going blind. Huh. And it was something that, I don't know if it was last week or the week before, but I talked about how um, the, the, the improvements that I'm getting is I'm sort of starting to see through the static and it's, it's kind of a, an insight into what normal vision might actually be like. Right. Because I've had this since birth, right? So right. I, don't, I don't know what, quote-unquote, normal. Um, normal peripheral vision is like. Right. 
So I kind of, um, ironically, I've been trying to, to figure out this, and ironically, I came up with the, the, the fact that I'm improving my eyesight so much that I know that I'm going blind. <laughs> yeah. And I thought that's a real uh, a head scratcher. Uh, it is. To try and, try and get your head around. Um, but it was, it was kind of momentary. It was, it was the, same, uh, the same thing that happened before, but obviously I'd had a bit of time to digest it and think about it. And I was actually able to spend some time with it this time. And I think because it was a nice, bright, sunny day, I had the beautiful blue above me and the beautiful green below me, and it was all kind of broken up or very staticky. Whereas before, and anyone that's been following this podcast will know that the static is just kind of a white mm -hmm. static that that I yeah. trying to see through it. So, but this was kind of more um, color was coming through the static, so I could see the RP. I could see the condition uh, that I had and and how it's actually affecting the periphery and how it's, it's instead of just nothing being there, there was kind of colors and, and, and blocks coming through. So for a second there, I was like, oh, am I going blind? Like, it was like a, a head oh, twist. Oh, it was like an Escher thing. You were well, switching your perspective on it. Yeah, well, reverse. I, yeah. I didn't know whether, uh, for a second there, it was like, have I always had good vision and now I'm losing my vision? Sure, yeah. Or is it that uh, I had poor vision and I was improving it? And it was a, I didn't know, you know, yeah. it was a real head twist. It's the half glass, me. half full or half empty thing, right? What? It, no, it wasn't even that. It wasn't, it wasn't so much of a, an emotional, philosophical. Uh, it was an actual, I didn't know. Um, okay. I, I just, it was like, I didn't know whether, whether it was like, oh, my vision... Because it, cause it, I kind of tuned into it. Mm -hmm. It was almost like, had I just woken up that morning mm -hmm. and my RP had got really bad. Right. And uh, I had really poor peripheral vision. Mm -hmm. Or um, was it, you know, afterwards it was like, well, it's the, it's the other way around. It's right. that I'm improving it so I can now see how poor the periphery is. Whereas before I, I didn't have any idea. It was just right. normal. It was just kind of the tunnel vision and... Yeah, you couldn't see anything around it, and it was just solid static. Mm -hmm. So where I've kind of been tuning into that surrounding, um, and it was almost like my my brain couldn't tell the difference. Right. Maybe that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. My brain generally didn't know um, at that point in time was it that my vision was improving or was it getting worse mm -hmm. because it was just a split fifty fifty. Yeah. So uh, anyway, I've been trying to digest it a little bit. As you could probably tell, it's still yeah. quite difficult to yeah. describe uh, and explain. And, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm glad that you kind of got it a, a little bit. Yeah. I could only imagine people like, what? What are you what? talking about? <laughs> um, so no, it's good. So it's, it's kind of, it, it's very tough. Um, mm -hmm. But it, you know, when you have time to digest it and, and think about it, you know, it's, it's great that my vision is improving to the point where I'm starting to see and have more of an idea of what normal periphery should actually be like and that that color is starting to come through whereas before it was just kind of that white static in the yeah way. and i can imagine that in people other people in your condition there is a tendency to emotionally distance yourself from that reality yeah. and i think that's an obstacle really mm -hmm. yeah i did i did actually think well i i probably need to spend some some time with this it makes sense just like um how we uh, block out a memory. Exactly, yeah. Uh, as kids, um, why wouldn't this be the same? If the brain yeah. is trying to protect us right. from, from a memory, mm -hmm. um, then why wouldn't it do the same thing with deteriorating peripheral exactly. vision? It yeah. makes sense that it would just block it out so that you just have the good vision in the, in the middle. It doesn't cause any upsets. You just get on with your day and, yeah. and so on and so forth. So to actually tune in to, it's almost like seeing the condition right. for what it actually Genuinely, is. yeah. Uh, and you could imagine that could be quite a, a scary thing. But maybe you're to the point now where you, you trust the improvement enough that your, mm -hmm. your psyche has said, I can look at this now. It's not so scary anymore. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and it was almost like I want to spend more time with it. Because yeah. it actually was a, a moment. So I'd be, I'm looking forward to yeah. spending a bit more time uh, with that and, and, and watch the emotions rise and fall and, yeah. and, and work with it a little bit more. So uh, yeah, yeah, really uh, real interesting. Very interesting to me anyway, on. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Well, I think that's a good time to move on to topic of the week. And the 
topic of the week this week is what is the cause of macular degeneration? And we want to uh, discuss this a little bit more, um, I guess mainly because we, we talked about peripheral vision yeah. uh, last week. So we thought, you know, we always talk about having balanced vision. So I guess it kind of makes sense that yeah. we uh, balance out this, Our the, topics, yeah. <laughs> the, the peripheral vision with the central vision. Yeah. Um, so we're going to be looking at uh, what are some of the causes of macular degeneration. And I guess one of the most common ones that we're going to hear from ophthalmologists and uh, doctors is um, age-related Right. It, it's all considered age-related. All macular degeneration is considered that. Although I'm not sure they know why it's age-related, but they, they'll mm -hmm. say it is age-related. Yeah, I guess if, <laughs> if you're under a certain age, they, they call it cone dystrophy. True, yeah. And if you're over, if you're over a certain age, macular, they call it macular, macular degeneration. Age-related macular degeneration. <laughs> so yeah. the reason why we say that is because the macula is, is the central vision, the center part of the eye. And it's, it's made up of, mainly made up of cone cells that sees that fine, clear, crisp color. So that's why if you start um, losing that central vision there, then they call that macular degeneration because you're degenerating the macula. Right. So I think if we actually go on to the other causes, maybe we can explain a little more why this happens in your older age anyway, mm -hmm. which they don't tend to do. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so the next yeah. uh, cause we would uh, bring up is circulation, is blood mm -hmm. circulation. And um, this is, we believe that it's the blood flow to the head, and actually a, a lot of ophthalmologists are now getting on board of this too, that poor circulation to your retina is causing macular degeneration. And it's, it takes two forms at this point. It's the wet macular degeneration or dry. Both of them have to do with circulation. The dry is uh, you have a debris from the retina doing its job of converting uh, light rays into electricity. When it does that conversion, it throws off debris. And normally there's a, a, a kind of cell called the phagocyte who goes is like the garbage man of the retina and goes and eats that debris and gets rid of it. It's kind of part of uh, the white blood cells. It's part of the sort of immune system. They also go through the body and removing sort of alien cells or right. mutated cells or yeah. you know, oxidative yeah. cells. So it's sort of a, the garbage man that Richard was just talking yeah. about, or woman, garbage person. Yeah, there we go. Um, that, that, that clears, uh, clears the, the debris, the bad cells from the yeah. blood. And that comes, so the retina is uh, where the photoreceptors are, and just below that there's the choroid, which is the blood, uh, a level, um, a layer of blood circulation, blood vessels. Mm -hmm. And that's where these uh, phagocytes come out of. Yeah, in fact, anyone that's uh, seeing this on the video um, can see that we've got three layers here. Or, you, you know, if you want to look at any uh, chart of the eye, or just do a, uh, an internet search for it, and you'll see the layers, and the, and the red layer um, in the middle is uh, the choroid that's that's feeding the retina with blood. That's right. how uh, obviously right. we need blood in order to get that nutrition and to take waste away. So as you see, the phagocytes are coming from that level to, to eat away the debris. If the circulation drops, then you're going to have less garbage men basically being transported mm -hmm. to your retina. Garbage people. Garbage people, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's the dry form. The, the wet form Again, it's the retina not getting enough circulation because of the blood flow problems. Starts growing new ve new vessels to supply the retina, and these re these blood vessels are subpar essentially. They leak, and uh, and they also grow in the wrong places. And it's called neovascular. I have trouble with this word. Mm -hmm. Neovascularization. It sounds like a baddie in a, in a Marvel <laughs> comic or yeah. uh, or something. Yeah. So that's these new blood vessels, vascularization, growing and then leaking, and then the blood uh, drowns the photoreceptors. Mm -hmm. so. And it's amazing because what the body tries to do is grow new blood vessels, right, to try and compensate for this right. weakness. But then those new ones that are growing are, are weaker right. than the other ones, so then they become even leakier. So it sort of exacerbates. The, yeah, um, the body doesn't always do. It does what it can to try and cope, yeah, but it, al it doesn't always work, sense. you know. Yeah. And it's the same in uh, mm -hmm. diabetic retinopathy. Right. right. I'm sure we'll we cover that in more detail later on down the road. But it's, it's the same thing where it's trying to grow more uh, capillaries and blood vessels to try and deal with the situation that's going on. But those new vessels are weak, so it's yeah. just leaking into the eye. And that's why um, what they do with surgery is uh, they used to laser it. Um, yeah. But they're finding that that's damaging 
the eye, right? So they're leading more towards the injections now. The, the chemical, yeah, the chemical injections that cauterize mm -hmm. essentially the, the blood vessels. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so that's blood flow. We did age, we did blood flow. And why don't you talk about misuse as mm -hmm. sort of the third? So, uh, so with the misuse then, um, if you think about it, the eye was kind of designed uh, or has evolved in order to respond to sunlight. So like Richard said before, you know, the job of the eye is to take light, convert it into electricity, where it's then sent to the brain, because it's the brain that actually sees. So it's sort of just sending that message to the brain. The brain puts all the pieces of the puzzle together, and then it goes through the brain, adding memory, smell, and whatnot. Um, and then we can sort of work with what we're seeing there as, as the vision. So our eyes have evolved around this. Now, if you think about how much time we actually spend in sunlight or daylight even. Mm -hmm. Even if it's a cloudy day, we spend most of our time indoors in the, in, and sadly at the moment uh, with these, these pretty horrible halogen uh, lights, the sort of yellowy color light that, that most people complain of headaches and whatnot mm -hmm. through. So we're not getting uh, enough light. Now the sun actually emits around 10,000 watts of sun um, which you think that the eye is actually being activated to and responding to. Whereas when we're indoors, you may be looking at 100, 200 yeah. watts. You know, it's really not the same comparison. So if you could imagine then that the eye has evolved around receiving this bright, brilliant sunlight. It's got the same power that the sunlight's got. So the cone cells respond and they're fully activated to that. Just like uh, if you were lifting a weight the muscle is going to respond to that. That strength responds to carrying and holding those heavier weights. Mm -hmm. So if you're only doing really light weights, then you're not really going to build the strength in that eye. Mm -hmm. So if you're not doing that, then they're going to become weak over time. Mm -hmm. So that's why we you know, recommend quite a lot of the exercises, and in particular we talk at the end about the sunning, is really trying to exercise and activate so not going outside and even when we do go outside we wear sunglasses yeah <laughs> so we're really not getting um, enough sunlight uh, to really strengthen those cone cells and make them activated and I have to say that this last cause is probably our perspective mm -hmm. and if you go to your ophthalmologist you've been diagnosed with macular degeneration they sometimes will prescribe sunglasses for you yeah, they, so. they feel that the, with a lot of conditions, uh, it seems to be that they yeah. feel that the sunlight is a degenerative yeah. cause and in fact avoid the sunlight at all costs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that really is, is more of a recent thing, right? The last, it's yeah. really the last 50 years, um, 100 years, have they, been, have they ever considered that the sun, I feel like previous civilizations, they've worshipped the sun, the sun yeah. was the giver of life, whereas yeah. now we're saying that it's the take, Taking Take away your way of life. life. Yeah. So, <laughs> so um, we're not too, not too sure about that. Yeah. So you've got the uh, the misuse there uh, and the under. Um, I guess that's more misuse. It, right? It's all misuse. I yeah. guess uh, another way of misusing is that we're not using the macula the way it was designed right. to be used. And you want to talk a little bit more about that? Yeah. So uh, what we do focus. So the macula is the central vision. It's our central versus our peripheral vision. So on one hand, we are really using our central vision a lot because we're looking at type, we're looking at computer screens, we're reading a lot of information. And that is the macula uh, versus the periphery. So on one hand, we are over, we're spending too much time using our macula during the day. So that's sort of an overuse of the macula. On the other hand, the macula was meant to be used for looking at fine detail, like the skin of a, of a fruit or a, a lizard or a snake skin, mm -hmm. something, some kind of detail more like that, not reading information. So it's a combination of, and it sounds contradictory, but it's spending too many hours using the macula, mm -hmm. but then those hours are spent using it in a way it wasn't designed to be used. So it'd just be like um, holding a weight for 14 hours. Mm -hmm. You're gonna eventually cause fatigue and damage that muscle if you continuously do that over the days. Now you could argue and say, well, why aren't you strengthening it? Because you're really using that muscle all the time. You're holding that weight, you're always using it. Why aren't you strengthening it? Mm -hmm. So and there's a difference here. We're overusing it and we're misusing it in a right. way that wasn't the way it was designed to keep it healthy. 
So this can be difficult if we don't necessarily have that, that clear understanding of the right. macula and how we use it. So it's always nice to think of it um, in muscle terms. So uh, again, you know, think about how uh, even if you're sitting at a desk, you sit for long periods of time, you get a sore back. You're not moving, the muscles are meant to be moving, they're just held in that constant uh, poor posture and also holding it upright. So you're overusing that muscle, but you're not using it in the way which it should be, which is to relax and contract and, and move around. Yeah. So uh, exactly the same thing there then with the macula. All right, so I want to now bring it back to age because mm -hmm. that's the main cause that's attributed to the main cause people are giving for the cause of macular degeneration. So let's just take it back to that. So if you spend your whole life uh, looking at reading and not looking at details, mm -hmm. centrally fo overusing centrally focused vision, and your circulation is poor uh, for a, enough time, ergo wouldn't you be degrading your macula? And mm -hmm. therefore, maybe when you're young, you can misuse it and have poor circulation. Mm -hmm and you get away with it, but then at a certain point, you can't get away with it anymore. Yeah, I mean, once those, once the, we talked about the phagocyte cells there, that are trying to clear everything away, and it just makes sense that over time, um, yeah. just like if there's a, I don't know, a postal strike, and, and maybe only uh, one quarter of the force goes on strike, you can still kind of get your mail, it's still going through, and then mm -hmm. half of the mail uh, people go on strike, and then you start to notice that it's not working as well. And then so on and so forth until yeah. you just not get any mail anymore, yeah. uh, or your uh, distiller that comes through. So uh, yeah. and everyone wants clean water. So um, you can think of it that way that over time it's kind of building up. Right. So even if there um, is, um, 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 you know, there's no avoiding. We're biological um, systems, and and as we age, um, right. You know, we we do. We're not as as fit as strong as as we were in our twenties. I think twenty one is is kind of our, our peak. Um, but then examples, again, on a, muscular, um, the, on a muscular level, that guy that just ran the marathon that was 100, I think he was, oh, yeah. marathon. So we can still use a muscle, we can still strengthen. I think in the past we used an example, I think it was a 95-year-old bodybuilder woman. I mean, she was 85. Um, definitely well, stronger than I am. Well, I'm from my generation, Jack LaLanne was, was towing boats across okay. some, the English Channel or somewhere with his teeth <laughs> or something when he was like 80 or something. And then like for that, my so. generation, maybe it's Hulk Hogan. Is there still, you go, yeah, yeah. <laughs> still doing press ups. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you, you can maintain that strength, and that's what we're saying here, that even if there is that predisposition. So there, there's two things here. One is that, you know, you could actually be, you know, causing the macular degeneration by using your system in a poor way. But one is that just through the knowledge that we know here is that even if you're not using it in a poor way, you have good blood flow, but we have this predisposition to macular degeneration through age, then we want to exercise the cone cells, exercise the macula by doing all these positive things um, so that you're keeping it strong and healthy so you maintain uh, that good central vision. Yep. Okay, great. Well, I think that's a good time to move on to question of the week. And the question of the week this week comes from a client, and this uh, client has a history of skin cancer, and she also has uh, cone dystrophy now, and she, we're uh, giving her exercises uh, of sunning to help out the macula, the cones, and she's seen the conflict of like, I shouldn't be out in the sun because mm -hmm. of the skin cancer possibility. So it's a little bit similar to what we were talking before about this, um, the fear of the sun that's, that's successfully uh, created uh, by the doctors and, and media and, and whatnot. And um, there is more and more literature coming out, you know, just how good the sun is for right. us. I mean, really, the list is endless. I was thinking about this the other day, that really the three things that we need is, is sunlight, food and water and uh, water I guess clean water now yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess oxygen but oxygen's in oh water, well, yeah, yeah that's true yeah we do need so oxygen. Um, but these are sort of our core things we, we have to have that that sunlight uh, and somewhere along the line yeah it's now common knowledge that we shouldn't be out in the sun and we shouldn't right. be avoiding it at all cost yeah um, so I guess in general kind of just keeping on that sunlight not so much someone that's experienced sun cancer uh, skin cancer um, is that in limited doses 
you know, the, the, the skin has its own protective layer against mm -hmm. the sun. And it's like 20, 20 odd minutes. Mm -hmm. then, then you're okay. And obviously you're avoiding midday heat. If you look at animals, then they avoid right. the, the heat um, in, the, you know, in the Sahara or, or whatever, on any African plains. They just go under, underneath the tree. And I guess we, you know, we would surely do the same. Yeah. But earlier on in the day and then later on in the afternoon, they will come out and, and hunt and, and whatnot. So, but that, there's no, that, there isn't really that differentiation for us. We just say the sun is bad. Avoid yeah, it all yeah. Cause. So, but of course, what we've got is uh, more so in the Western world is sunbathing where you're outside for three, four, six hours where you're lying there in the sun. And yeah. of course, then, you know, our bodies aren't necessarily designed to protect ourselves yeah. against that. So um, just kind of put that argument out there first before we answer the question now. Um, the second part, totally understand with an individual that um, has already had bad experiences. Right. And that, that does imply that that individual may be sensitive. Mm -hmm. sensitive. And maybe they have a history of too much sun in a yeah. young, younger part of their life. Or... And it's another example of everyone's an individual. And yeah. You really can't just say, yes, it's fine, or no, it's not. It, it really does depend on, on you and, and your previously, previous experiences on that. The same as people with, uh, say, photophobia. Right. Um, and they say, oh, well, you know, when I go out in the sun, um, it hurts my eyes. And we would say, well, you know, it's because the pupils are weak. You're not used to it. You wear sunglasses all the time. Blah, blah, blah. But sometimes it could be that maybe the pupil isn't constricting enough due to a condition mm -hmm. or, yeah. you know, there, there could be other things behind it. So we totally understand um, with, uh, this, uh, with our client that, you know, they, they already have this fear built around the sun. And then we're asking them to go outside and do the sunning exercise. Right. Well, I'm just thinking back to the examples you brought up of indigenous cultures and things like that. Mm -hmm. So some of our solutions really come from that. They're very common sense. Mm -hmm. Like, don't go out in the middle of the day. Like you would, yeah. you know, the Ab Australian Aborigines would not be standing out in the in the, in the middle <laughs> yeah. midday sun. They'll go yeah, into the shade. Like yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so don't go out in the middle of the day. Mm -hmm. do, do your sunning before, you know, in the early morning and in the mm -hmm. late afternoon when the sun is low. And the atmosphere does filter out a lot of the UV, UV rays that you're, you're in danger mm -hmm. of yeah. uh, from the skin cancer are filtered out by the atmosphere. It's a natural filtration system there. So, and you can also, if you want, you know, make sure that you're covered, uh, put sun cream on, um, you know, cover yourself up. Uh, and just, you could also do it at lower stints. You could just do five minute intervals at the sun, mm -hmm. and have breaks go in and out and rest from the sun. You could just do you know, 10 minutes and 10 minutes um, and just break it up that way. So there's always, it, never see the exercises as just a rigid thing that we're saying, do this exercise and you can't, there's no way of, of getting uh, around it. You sort of have to play and adapt it to the individual. That's why we call it self-healing. Yeah. Um, because it, it comes down to you. It's, we're just sharing you the knowledge and then you've got to sort of work with it and, and, and do, the, do the work yourself. Um, so yeah, we thought that was a really interesting question that yeah. we really just uh, wanted to share uh, with you guys. And it's another, another example of the importance of having your questions exactly, answered. Yeah. And we talk about with the coaching call that you get with the uh, I Exercise Express, that you know, if this was somebody that wasn't uh, in touch with us, then they would never have done the exercises because right. that fear would just push you away from doing it. And it right. completely makes sense. Why and they would. might even like give up on I Exercises because of that one yeah. issue, yeah. yeah. So yep. certainly a uh, big importance there on making sure we get our questions answered. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, we hope you've enjoyed this week's episode. If you want to find out a little bit more information on how you can improve and maintain your eyesight, then head over to the website at envisionselfhealing.com. You'll find the free ebook there that will give you 10 top tips on how you can start improving your eyesight. And we talk a little bit more about the basics there and some exercises that you can do to start working on your vision. You can also check out a lot more of these podcasts and also some individual blog uh, videos that both Richard and I have done to try and give you as much information as possible how you can start working on your eyes. You can also find in the conditions section um, some preset exercises that we've done just to give you that, that next boost uh, so you can start working on whatever particular condition you've got. And indeed, you could also access our library of eye exercises over there and check out the individual eye exercises that are best for you. If you liked anything of uh, what you heard here, then feel free to share this on Facebook and like it. Uh, and you can also subscribe to us on uh, YouTube or indeed if you're watching this on a podcast uh, on iTunes so that you will get these episodes for the rest of your life.
Oh, wow. <laughs> At least as long as we live, anyway. <laughs> as soon as you click that subscribe button, that's it. It's going wow. straight to you all the time. And probably until you click unsubscribe. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so yeah. It's probably not as dramatic as that. Yeah, probably not. Okay, great. Well, good luck with your eye exercises this week, everyone, and happy healing. And have a good week.